So what is going on YouTube? My name is Meho and welcome to your fourth Chrome extension development tutorial in which we're going to take a look at some script executions environment as I say in Google Chrome extensions and what does that actually means is that with the JavaScript, the native JavaScript we have in web pages, it's pretty much like you have your JavaScript, you have access to all the DOM and all that's API and that's it pretty much. So yeah but in chrome extensions what we have is there are different execution environments where some of your javascript will work in one environment and some would work in another environment so for example if you want to communicate to a native application on desktop right like if you want to execute a java file or a java method from a chrome extension you would like to have that in your script execution environment which is kind of protected from the user interference like you do not want the user to uh, maliciously pass any argument to your java class or whatever that means so there are different kind of environments where your javascript would execute in a chrome extension and let's just take a look at that so if we go to i guess i close that there we have this manifest JSON documentation you would see something known as this background script and what this background script is pretty much is that it has access to all the APIs of Chrome right so what that means is that Chrome provides some APIs starting with Chrome dot star whatever it is and these APIs are kind of exclusive to Chrome extensions only you cannot run these APIs inside browser obviously obviously because they are not chrome extensions so what we can do is we can actually add some scripts in here and those would execute in the order so you can also go to this background and uh, you would see pretty much something like this which says background scripts and background.js and you can add multiple scripts because you see that this is an array so let's just say we add background.js only and we can create background.js right here and say I guess we are in the wrong directory um, let's just create a new file right here background.js it is and I guess it's a lot of folders for a very simple extension well we can just get rid of that later on so what I'm gonna do is uh, right here I'm gonna say console.log hello world Right, and we can actually just console.log the document.location as well so that we can see what's happening. So, right, if I go to extension and reload, you would immediately notice that we get something like inspect view background page. Now, what happens is that background scripts are completely isolated from all the other scripts in your extension. Background script doesn't care what content script is doing or what your pop up is doing, they have their own kind of uh, environment you can say so if we take a look you would see that you get hello world and this ugly path which is completely isolated from http and all that world right so yeah now one thing to note is that we have added this persistence false right here so what does that actually mean well actually what this makes is that if your background script is not really doing anything then Chrome would actually just make it rest like it would just free up resources being used by your script so you could kind of omit that doesn't matter but uh, if you set persistence false what this means is that you are essentially making it an event page as the Chrome documentation says which means that uh, your timers would be kind of uh, thrown away if you are running like set in the world in your background script or you are doing any um, I don't know some sign some sort of asynchronous operation in your script and in the meantime Chrome extension sees that oh this script is persistent let's just take it off so it will just go away so you can just pretty much omit this it doesn't really matter on uh, modern devices a lot because Chrome anyhow eats up a lot of RAM so yeah it doesn't matter if your extension takes up 2 MBs or 3 MBs more RAM. So you can just omit that, it's up to you. 
so once you do that again you can take a look and reload it and right now as you can see you get this background page inactive but you reload it you won't get background page inactive with it because now your script is always running in the background regardless of uh, it needs it the extension requires it or not right so this brings us to content scripts in chrome extension and what these are is pretty much they run on the page and these would be the mostly the scripts we will be mostly interested into so content scripts if we take a look right here so if we take a look it says us that in manifest or json file we have to do something like this what essentially they are is that they actually run in the context of the page so that you can actually access some of the data not really all of the data of the page and you can like show a toolbar or create uh, any sort of change to the page if you want to so if we add a content script right here you see that it is an array which is an array of objects and it gets some matches and then css and js and all that stuff so we're going to omit the css and for the js we're going to remove this jquery part and what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this wildcard something like this so it's kind of a very um kind of open sort of wildcard which would match all the http and the https as well and it runs my script.js so let's just create one my script.js and let's just say we are developing a spam application where we would just want to um, replace every link of you know any product with our affiliate link or whatever evil stuff you can think of and uh, we can do that with this my script so i'm not going to go into that but what we can do essentially is for now we can just say console log document location.href and we can just say something like uh, sending user history to database something like that so that we can act a bit evil and then we can do this instead so now if we take a look reload our application go to any page inspect element and if we reload this you would see that we get sending user history to database and this thing and again in the view you can also see that our um, I don't know what this is but uh, hello world I guess so yeah hello world so inside hello world context we have access to this document so right now if you're not familiar with this what i did with this is i changed my console context to hello world context so as if we are writing script right here inside this file only so if i write document here you would see that we have pretty much access to the same document right here which we have so we can access like document.body like that so we have access to the same body which the user right now is seeing within our or rather i guess we are in the wrong file right so yeah same we have access again access to the same body which the user is seeing right now but the difference is if i write window well window is technically not same because let's just see if i go to top which is my main page and I define like where my awesome value is or whatever that means is 10 and I switch back to hello world and I try to write this I get it's not defined and if I try to write this we get undefined because we do not have access to the window object right here this window object is different for content scripts than from the scripts which are running on the main page so you cannot really access the data defined by the javascript inside the main page from content scripts within you have to execute the scripts directly 
into the page itself to get access to that well we'll get to that later and that is pretty much really our third category which is the injected scripts which can be inserted using content scripts into the main scripts where you want if you want to access some data like associated with window global and then again you can just create some popup.js script as well well that's kind of a different environment only right, you can just write script src uh, popup.js and we can create a popup.js file here and we can say like uh, um, alert document dot location dot href which would be a weird url for you right here you can see that we get this weird little url so yeah that's pretty much it on the scoping or not really scoping but kind of execution environment for chrome extensions and uh, that's all for this one and if you liked it then please don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next one